Pollyanna by Eleanor H. Porter Chapter 1 Pollyanna's Arrival One June morning, Miss Polly Harrington finished reading a letter and entered the kitchen. Nancy, who was washing the dishes, noticed that Miss Harrington was not calm like her usual self, but seemed to be in a hurry. Nancy, yes, ma'am, Nancy replied automatically. Nancy, stop working when I'm talking to you. When you are done with the washing, go to the attic and prepare the small room there. Clean it. It'll be a room for my niece, who is going to stay and live with me. A little girl? Coming here, Miss Harrington? It will be so nice. Nice, Miss Polly asked stiffly. I have just received a letter which says that her father has died, so she has no one, and, as a good person knowing my duties, I am going to raise that child. Nancy knew for sure from that cold tone of voice that Polly Harrington wasn't expecting her niece with an open heart. A couple of hours later, she finished preparing the room, muttering to herself all the time about how inhuman and stiff Polly Harrington was. Then she went to the garden to talk to old Tom, the gardener. Old Tom had worked for the Harrington family for over thirty years. He explained to Nancy that the small girl must be a child of the oldest Harrington daughter, Jane. Twenty-five years ago, she fell in love with a poor minister, and even though her entire family was against this relationship, she married him and they moved to another city. Later she died, and since that day, Miss Polly was the only living mistress of the Harrington's big house. Polly Harrington was only fifteen at the time of her sister's marriage. She didn't marry herself and was living a sad and lonely life, changing everything into a duty. Tom and Nancy's conversation was interrupted by a sharp voice calling, Nancy, come here immediately. She ran and found Miss Polly in the room in the attic. The room, though clean, was poorly furnished. Apart from a bed, two chairs, a table, and a small desk, there wasn't anything else there. Due to the closed windows, it was very hot inside. Nancy, there was a fly. The windows must have been opened. Didn't you know that they cannot be opened when there are no screens in them? But it was hot, and I wanted to let some fresh air in. I have ordered screens for this room, but as they are not here yet, the windows must remain closed. Do remember this. Also, my niece arrives tomorrow. You and Timothy will collect her from the station. In the telegram, it states that Pollyanna will be wearing a red dress and a straw hat. She has light hair. That should be enough for you to recognize her among the crowd. Nancy looked puzzled. But you... No, I shall not go there myself. It is not necessary. Then Miss Polly walked out of the room, leaving Nancy behind. The next day at the station, Nancy knew on the spot that the slender girl with the eager, freckled face was the one that they had come to collect. Miss Pollyanna, I'm so glad to see you. I'm so glad you came, she said, and without waiting for any reply, the girl embraced Nancy. You are? Nancy asked, surprised. Oh, yes. I've been wondering what you would look like and what the house looks like. It is so lovely that I'll have my own room and my aunt. After my father died, there were only the ladies from the aid. But even though they were so kind to me, they weren't my family. And now I have you, Aunt Polly. When she stopped talking to catch her breath, Nancy said, It will be all right, but I'm not your aunt. She stayed at home. I'm Nancy. I help in the house with the washing and cooking. Oh, well, I'm glad it's you. And there is also my aunt, still waiting for me. You can see her house from over here, Timothy said, interrupting their conversation and pointing at a big white house surrounded by trees. Oh, how lovely! Is my aunt rich? Pollyanna wanted to know. Yes, she is. So I will have all the nice things in my room then. The carpet, pictures, curtains. We were poor and couldn't afford such things. But now I will have them all. Nancy had no answer to that. Chapter 2 The Glad Game When they arrived, Miss Polly didn't even rise from the chair to meet her niece. How do you do, Pollyanna? She hadn't finished the sentence before the girl began hugging and kissing her. 
Oh, Aunt Polly, how perfectly lovely! This house, Nancy, and you! Miss Harrington was terrified by such behavior and commanded Pollyanna to stand still so she could look at her. I'm not very much to look at. I have freckles, and I don't have a nice dress. My father. Never mind what your father said. Don't talk about him to me, Aunt Polly interrupted immediately. Let's go to your room. Your trunk should be there by now. Pollyanna's eyes were nearly full with tears, but she followed her aunt obediently. This is your room, she explained when they entered the empty room where there was not a single thing Pollyanna had dreamed about. Do not open the windows in order not to let flies in. Screens have been ordered. Supper is at six. Nancy will help you to unpack, she said, and then she left the room. A couple of minutes later, Nancy found the girl kneeling beside her bed, covering her face with both hands. You poor little girl, it will be okay. Oh, Nancy, I'm so ungrateful. I wanted all those nice things, and I wasn't glad for having a home and Aunt Polly and the beautiful view out of the window. And I'm so glad there's no mirror in the room, so I don't have to look at my freckles. I'm sure it's going to be a very nice place. Nancy pretended to be busy unpacking because she had no idea what to say to cheer Pollyanna up. After the unpacking was done, Nancy left to prepare supper, and Pollyanna, not telling anyone, left the house to explore the town. Because her little walk wasn't that short, she was late for supper. When she came back, Nancy was waiting for her in the kitchen. Your aunt was angry with you, so you will get only milk and bread. Where were you? I was worried. Oh, I'm so glad I will eat with you. And it's nice you've been worried about me. I'm so glad. You're glad? No supper but milk and bread, and you're glad? Nancy could hardly believe Pollyanna's words. Oh, that's the game. Game? Yes, the glad game. My father taught me how to play it. We were poor, and we didn't have many things. When we needed something, we wrote to the ladies' aid, and we were sent barrels. But we never knew what they would contain. Once I wanted a doll, but in the barrel there were only crutches. I was so disappointed I cried, and then my father came up with the idea of the glad game. It means you have to look for something that will make you happy, no matter what it will be. How could you be glad about getting crutches instead of a doll? At first I didn't know either, but it is so much more fun when it's difficult, and you should be glad just because you don't need them. Pollyanna went on explaining how the game became habit, and how fun it was, and how hard it was to think of anything to be glad about when her father died, and she felt so lonely. I play it every day, and I made so many other people play it with me. Will you play it, Nancy? I can't say I know exactly how, but I will, I will. Oh, splendid! After she finished eating bread with milk, she went to talk to her aunt, who was in the living room reading a book. Pollyanna, you should learn to be on time for meals. Otherwise, every time you are late, you will be sent to the kitchen. Oh, Aunt Polly, don't be sorry for me. I like milk and bread, and I like Nancy. These words caused a confused look to appear on Miss Harrington's face. She couldn't understand how anyone could be glad about being punished. Remember about breakfast at seven thirty. Good night, Pollyanna. The next morning during breakfast, Aunt Polly noticed a fly in the room. Who let the fly in? She asked angrily. That may be my fly, answered Pollyanna merrily. I've opened the window because it was very hot in my room. Didn't you remember that your duty was not to open the window if there were no screens on them? Flies are dirty and dangerous for your health. My duty? Certainly. Polly Harrington's face expressed a look of shocked anger. I will give you a brochure explaining how dangerous flies can be for your health. You will read it after breakfast. This time as well, the punishment turned out to be a pleasure. Pollyanna was glad for being given the brochure to read, and she was even more glad when she found out so many interesting things about flies. Aunt Polly spent the next couple of days buying her niece decent clothes and planning a set of duties for her to do, such as reading, music lessons, cooking, sewing, and others. Pollyanna listened patiently to her new daily schedule and then asked, 
But, Aunt Polly, you haven't left me any time just to live. To live, child, isn't learning a living? It's a duty. Living is when you do what you want to do. Play, walk, talk to nice people. You're a most extraordinary child, Pollyanna. I have to do my duty, though, to take care of your proper education. But how can you be glad about all these duties? Pollyanna tried again, but with no results. However, in the end, she was given enough free time for her little pleasures. She loved to spend time learning how to cook with Nancy or reading aloud. In her free time, she talked to Nancy, Old Tom, or Timothy. Soon they all knew about the ladies' aid who helped Pollyanna's father to raise her, as well as about the glad game. Not only did they learn it, they also began playing it. Chapter 3 Mrs. Snow and Mr. Pendleton Pollyanna started to make friends among the people in town. One day she got to know Mrs. Snow, who was an invalid and was forced to stay in bed all day long. She was poor and people from the town were helping her by sending different things. Miss Harrington, also being a good and dutiful person, felt obliged to send Mrs. Snow a meal once a week. This particular day, she sent Pollyanna to take her some calf's foot jelly. Nancy warned the girl that Mrs. Snow was a grumpy old lady and that usually nothing is good enough for her. If it's Monday, she would wish for Sunday, and if you bring her some chicken, she would wish for jelly, and if you bring her jelly, she would wish for lamb broth. What a funny woman! She must be surprising and different. I like different people. To Pollyanna, there were obviously no problems so she merrily took the basket and went over to see Mrs. Snow. While being shown into her room, Pollyanna had to blink for a while before her eyes got used to the gloomy, dark place. How do you do, Mrs. Snow? I brought you some calf's foot jelly. Jelly, she murmured. I would have preferred chicken. Very well, then. My appetite isn't that good because I didn't sleep much last night. You lose so much time sleeping, said Pollyanna. Sleeping? the old woman was puzzled. Yes, you could have been living, Pollyanna kindly explained. Mrs. Snow was so shocked that she ordered the girl to open the curtains so that she could see her clearly. When there was light in the room, Pollyanna shouted, I'm so glad you wanted to open the curtains, because I can see now that you are so pretty. Me? Pretty? Not long after that, Pollyanna was combing Mrs. Snow's long black hair and arranging it. Miraculously, the old lady stopped complaining. Then she was told about the glad game. However, she couldn't think of anything that an invalid could be glad for. The girl promised to come up with some idea and tell it to her during the next visit. Just as she promised, the next week she told her that she should be happy that other people aren't forced to stay in their homes and they can visit her. She also brought her a surprise. Remembering how difficult it was to satisfy her with a meal, Pollyanna asked Nancy to prepare a little bit of every dish so there would be something that Mrs. Snow wanted. In no time, the old lady started to follow Pollyanna's instructions about the game, and she realized that even by spending whole days in bed, she could still do something, and so she started to knit. Mrs. Snow wasn't the only person from the town Pollyanna was on friendly terms with. Her way of behaving and her smiling face always helped her to break all the ice between her and strangers. She slowly got to know everyone in the neighborhood, and she even managed to become acquainted with John Pendleton, the strange and quiet rich man who never spoke to anyone. Time passed by, and even Aunt Polly, under the influence of Pollyanna, became somewhat softer. To her own surprise, she allowed Pollyanna to move to a nicely furnished room containing all those nice things the girl longed for so much. She also somehow agreed to keep a homeless dog and a cat, which her niece brought from God knows where. But when she brought a homeless boy back with her and asked her aunt to let him live with him, Miss Harrington strongly opposed the idea. Jimmy Bean, that was the boy's name, was an orphan and was living in an orphanage, but he wanted to find a real home for himself. Pollyanna was extremely disappointed by her aunt's reaction to the idea of adopting Jimmy, so she decided to do everything she could to find him a home. 
She even went to the local ladies' aid, looking for their advice and help, and hoping to find a home and family for the boy. Unfortunately, she wasn't very successful with that. One day, while she was wandering around, she came to the Pendleton Woods. Suddenly, she heard barking, and then she saw a dog. He was barking as if he wanted to show her something. She decided to follow him, and after maybe ten minutes, she saw a man lying motionless on the ground. Quickly, she recognized Mr. Pendleton and approached him. "Are you okay, Mr. Pendleton? Are you hurt?" He seemed to be irritated by her questions, but smiled grimly and said, "Listen, child, you have to go to my home, which is in Pendleton Hill, about five minutes from here, and call the doctor." Do you know how to use the phone? Oh yes, sir. Once when Aunt Polly, never mind your Aunt Polly now. There should be a card for Doctor Chilton with his telephone number on it. Call him and tell him that I probably have a broken leg and tell him where to find me. A broken leg? I'm so glad I came here. And will you go and do what I ask you to do and stop talking? John Pendleton said impatiently. Pollyanna stood up and left toward Pendleton's home. Fifteen minutes later, she was back by his side. What's the problem? Couldn't you get in? Couldn't you make a phone call? Why, of course. I did all that you wanted me to do. Doctor Chilton said he knew where to look for you, and I came to stay here with you. John Pendleton was complaining, but she didn't pay much attention to it. And after a while, she helped him to place his head on her lap in order to make him feel a little bit more comfortable. Suddenly, they heard a cheerful voice. So there is the little lady playing nurse. It was Doctor Chilton himself. Chapter Four: Jelly and Red Rose. As she was late again for supper, she went straight to the kitchen to talk to Nancy about the accident in the woods. A couple of days later, she came up with the idea of visiting Mister Pendleton and asked her aunt if she could take some food to somebody else that week. What are you up to? She asked in a cold voice, "Nothing. You wouldn't mind if I take the calf's foot jelly to him instead of her this one time, just this once. The broken leg will soon be healed, and then Mrs. Snow can have all her jelly after this one time." "Him? Broken leg? Who are you talking about?" "Oh, I forgot you didn't know." Then Pollyanna quickly told Miss Harrington the whole story about finding Mr. Pendleton in the woods and arranging medical help for him. May I? She asked again. John Pendleton? She cried in horror. Do you know him? Does he know who you are and where you live? I don't think so. I told him my name, but I don't think he remembers. Very well, Pollyanna. You may take the jelly to him this afternoon, but he must think it is a gift from you, not me. Be sure he doesn't think I sent it. Pollyanna spent a nice afternoon at Mister Pendleton's house. At first, she was nearly prevented from visiting him by his nurse, but luckily, Doctor Chilton saw her and made the nurse let her in. Mister Pendleton wasn't very talkative, as he wasn't in a good mood, but Pollyanna cheered him up. She kept talking about everything. She talked about the game and about the jelly she brought—the jelly that was from her, not from Aunt Polly. Aunt Polly? Who is Aunt Polly? It is my aunt, Miss Polly Harrington. Your Polly's niece? You live with her? He breathed heavily. Yes, my mum was her sister, but she died long ago, and recently my father died too. So I was sent to live with my aunt. She's my only family. Suddenly, John Pendleton's face became very white and stiff with anger. The girl, unsure about what had happened, decided to leave. She said goodbye, but he didn't reply. On her way out, she came across Doctor Chilton. Who offered to drive her back home? On their way there, they had a pleasant conversation, during which she included him into the constantly growing number of people playing the glad game. When she got home, she found her aunt in the sitting room. Who was it that drove you home, Pollyanna? Oh, it was Doctor Chilton, Aunt Polly. Do you know him, Doctor Chilton? Here, she gasped. Yes, he drove me from Mister Pendleton's house. And don't worry, Aunt. I told Mister Pendleton that you didn't send that jelly. Dear me, Aunt Polly sighed. A couple of days passed. One afternoon, Pollyanna succeeded in convincing her aunt to let her comb and arrange her hair. 
Her niece untied her neatly done bun and let it loose in curls over her shoulders. She also put a white shawl over Miss Harrington's shoulders. Then she took her aunt's hand and pulled her towards the terrace. Pollyanna, where are you taking me? Only a minute, and you'll be glad I did it. Pollyanna reached for one of the red roses in the garden and put it over her aunt's ear. Suddenly, her aunt turned back and vanished quickly inside the house. The girl noticed the figure of Dr. Chilton standing in the courtyard. She ran to greet him, but inside the house she bumped into her aunt. How could you dress me like this and let me be seen? Miss Harrington said furiously. But, Aunt Polly, you look so lovely, so perfectly lovely. Pollyanna looked sadly while her aunt was tidying up her hair. Dr. Chilton was waiting for her with an invitation from Mr. Pendleton. After the last visit, she was puzzled why he acted so strangely, so she stopped visiting him because she thought he was angry with her. But to his invitation, she willingly agreed to go. While they were leaving, Dr. Chilton asked her, Was that your aunt, Pollyanna? Yes. Didn't she look lovely? I think you're right. She looked quite lovely, he answered softly. I'm so glad you said so. I'll tell her. Never, Pollyanna, Dr. Chilton said immediately. Do not tell her what I have just said. Then he took her in silence to Pendleton Woods. John Pendleton welcomed Pollyanna with a smile, which was quite unusual. I guess I haven't thanked you for the jelly last time. Please go to my library and you should find a carved box there. Could you bring it here, please? Pollyanna did as she was asked, and they spent the next few hours admiring all the treasures that Mr. Pendleton brought home after years of traveling. There was a story behind each one of these marvelous items. Little girl, I want you to come and see me more often. I'm lonesome, and I need you. Last time you were here, I realized you reminded me of somebody very dear to me, and I wasn't sure whether I wanted to see you anymore, but I do. Will you be so kind to visit me? She replied with a cheerful voice. Well, Mr. Pendleton, I'd love to come here more often. Thank you, Pollyanna.